The first people are starting to join in. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Lavinia, and I'm part of the Dog City team. Uh, it's nice to be here with you uh, tonight. So the focus of today's webinar is going to be Syracuse University's Whitman School of Management. Uh, and the specific topic is uh, going to give you insight about how to shape your future, how to shape your career uh, with the academic offer at uh, the Whitman School of Management. So uh, here with us tonight, we have uh, Shri. Uh, she is uh, the Assistant Director for Recruitment and Master's Programs. So welcome, Shri, and thank you for being here with us tonight. Um, before I leave the floor to Shri, I just wanted to remind you that all questions are welcome and you can pop them in the Q&A box. So anything re um, regarding admissions, uh, scholarship, academic offer in general at um, the Whitman School of Management. And of course, uh, if you are interested to get your certificate of attendance, uh, you can do that by clicking the link that I will forward uh, shortly in the chat. So please do that. Uh, it's going to be a great insight for us. Uh, so yeah, I would like to once again welcome all of you uh, to uh, tonight's event with Syracuse University's uh, Whitman School of Management. Uh, and I will now leave the floor to Shri. Thank you, Shri, for being here with us tonight. Oh, Lavinia, thanks so much for uh, having me at this uh, event today. And again, welcome to all the participants. Thank you for joining. And um, I do encourage you to uh, take advantage of the certificate and the survey because that would uh, give me and my team additional feedback in knowing what types of topics you might be interested in for a future collaboration with Doxity. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, are you able to see yes. this PowerPoint? Yes, okay. thank you. I'm just going to, um, well, I guess this should be fine, right? Like, I don't need to go onto full screen. Yes, either way you prefer. Okay, let's try. Maybe this is better. Okay, yeah. so feel free to uh, drop your uh, questions uh, into the Q&A box, uh, which I will take at the very end. What I've prepared today for this uh, presentation is more of a general information session covering the MBA and master's program offerings at the Whitman School of Management. Um, as mentioned in the introduction, I am the assistant director at the uh, Whitman School of Management at Syracuse University. I've been at Whitman since 2014, specifically in this role and have had uh, the wonderful opportunity to engage with many young students from different parts of the world. And so I'm happy to learn about your educational uh, aspirations and uh, see how our programs might be able to help guide you forward. So I'm going to start with a little bit about the location. So Syracuse, New York is where we are located, uh, Syracuse University. This is actually a picture taken of one of the iconic buildings on campus called the Hall of Languages. And it's a lovely sunny day, as you can see. But the university itself was founded in 1870. And you have many more such um, majestic looking buildings all across campus. The Whitman building, if you notice uh, in my virtual background, is actually a more modern looking building as opposed to the Hall of Languages, which is a more, you know, um, classical kind of architecture, but you will see a nice mix of both types of uh, buildings across campus afforded to different colleges, housing different colleges. There are about 13 colleges in various disciplines and the Whitman School of Management is specifically the college that works with um, programs uh, related to the business disciplines both for undergraduate and graduate. And today I'll be only covering the programs at the graduate level. So overall, we have about more than 6,000 students uh, uh, who are in various graduate programs across uh, the university and representing uh, more than 100 countries and uh, all 50 states of the US at any given time. 
So the Whitman School of Management was the 16th school to be accredited by the association, um, the Accreditation Association for Collegiate Schools of Business, the AACSP. So one of the things that students have always asked me in terms of why should anybody come to Whitman other than the fact that, you know, yes, we have business school programs, you're interested in specific disciplines, like what is the USP? So one of the things I have found in my time at Whitman since 2014, like I said, is how easy it is for students of different cultures, different educational backgrounds to all come together and uh, form lifelong friendships. This is, this is actually something I have seen over the years and it, it surprises me every time, but then I also know that it will happen. So it's a sort of like a, like a wonderful moment to actually see it happen is because it's fostered by the small class sizes along with the resources of a large university. So there is a lot of collaborative work that students do in their degree programs, in their classes, but because the class sizes are not very huge, it allows for forming good friendships. It also allows for forming good uh, uh, understanding uh, in um, each other's strengths and playing up to those strengths and assisting the others who may not have certain strong points, right? So it's a very collaborative, nurturing environment. It's a it's an environment that fosters learning uh, throughout the building. So it's not just in your classroom, but even across uh, throughout the building. There is it's a green building, environmentally sustainable. Uh, 22 classrooms. You have separate meeting rooms on the third floor, which is the graduate floor for students to meet with, collaborate, brainstorm. Um, also, the building is uh, the entire building is like, you know, smart enabled. So you can connect from anywhere in the building. And I have seen students have virtual meetings. I've seen them have virtual meetings with uh, uh, clients with whom they're working on projects, uh, with with company recruiters, with, uh, you know, for interviews. Use, use the building in many different ways that actually helps advance their uh, educational pursuits, right? So it's a very student-focused environment. These are the specializations, and we'll go over in more detail uh, about each of these programs, but the specialization or the concentration areas or the disciplines offered at the business school, it's a traditional uh, set of uh, specializations. So you have accounting, business analytics, entrepreneurship and emerging enterprises, finance, marketing management, uh, real estate, as I've indicated, is only within the MBA as a specialization and supply chain management. So you'll see that some of these have these little asterisks. They are indicative that that particular degree program is STEM designated. And if you have questions, we can take discuss that maybe during the Q&A portion. Um, but the MBA program is not yet currently STEM designated. It is in the process. At this point, that's all I can tell you. I cannot reveal more information, but know that it is uh, being discussed and there are uh, steps in place for uh, considering that possibility. So let's start with the MS experience and go over what are generally considered to be the shorter versions of various specialized master's programs rather than doing a full MBA with a specialization in one particular area. Why are these specialized master's programs more attractive um, to students without a lot of work experience, right? Because they are offered as specialized concentrations of study. You also have to understand, this is probably more common in Europe, but at US business schools, they are a more recent um, entry. They, they probably came onto the stage only in the last uh, 20 years or so, right? So they are specialized pro concentrations of study offered uh, in, in specific areas. So you may not necessarily have a lot of breadth across uh, studying all aspects of management or all, all aspects of uh, business that you would get in the MBA program. But this might be a nice option for those who are 
let's say, fresh graduates in a particular discipline and are exploring career possibilities in a particular field and want to just get the depth of knowledge, right, in a particular area. So they are of shorter duration and they are flexible um, with in-depth focus in a specialized focus area. So for example, MS in marketing. So you would only be studying content specific to marketing as I will show you uh, in the later slides. But because the duration is, I'm sorry, because the focus is then restricted to specific content, the duration of the program is also comes down and the number of credits that you need to complete the program is also less. At Syracuse University, we actually allow you to choose the um, time frame as to when you want to finish the program. And so um, the coursework is intense and uh, the curriculum is very structured. So you may not have a lot of room for electives or wiggle room for uh, doing a whole bunch of other classes that might be tangentially related if you decide to go for the specialized master's programs. The internship option is definitely recommended and allowed after one year of study. So you have to remember as an international student coming to the US, you are expected to have attended school for at least one year or two semesters before you can take up any type of employment uh, outside of campus. Right. So therefore, uh, the program is designed such that you start the you start in the fall semester and then you complete a second semester in the spring semester and you are ready for uh, entertaining an internship opportunity potentially for summer. Work experience typically is not required for these specialized master's programs and actually for uh, fall 22 starting uh, for Starting for the cohort for fall 22, we have actually made the GRE and the GMAT tests optional. So if you want to take the test, you have already taken the test and you've scored well, then it does not hurt to send in your score. But if you are in two minds about should I or should I not take the test, you're welcome to not take the test and still apply to the program, assuming you're eligible with everything else. So it's an ideal option for entering the job market sooner and gaining work experience before you decide you actually want to gain advanced content knowledge and then go in for the MBA. So for those, again, keep in mind, MBA is not the only offering now, nowadays at business schools, you do have the option for the specialized master's programs. So this gives you an idea for the MS curriculum to complete 30 credits, how it is structured at the Whitman School of Management. Now, I will also show you another similar slide for completing 36 credits, which is for the MS in business analytics degree. That's the only degree in our specialized master's offerings, which requires 36 credits. All the others require 30 credits. So typically, if you decide to do the nine month track, remember how I said it's flexible duration. So if you decide to do the nine month track, not counting the summer, then because you're finishing up, you're starting in the fall and you're finishing up the next spring. So you're graduating by May, right? So you're not doing anything in the summer. It's possible this way. This is very intense. I usually don't recommend this for international students, but of course you don't have to make the decision at the time of application. When you come into the program, you get admitted and you have the orientation. You can meet with your academic advisor and your program director at that time and then make a decision which track might be suitable for you, right? But this is more for information purposes. 16 months track, I do apologize, I missed out. Um, content here. It's 16 months track with internship. This is my error. It's with the summer internship included. So then your credits will break down. You have to be at nine credits to be considered a full-time student. So you're doing fall and spring nine credits each. You're doing summer internship for three credits and another nine credits when you return in the fall. 21 month track. This makes it a little more comfortable if you so choose to go this route where you complete three semesters of nine credits and then use the last spring semester 
for three credits and you don't have to count an internship here. Again, this is for more generic distribution for information purposes. You can choose whichever track and finalize it when you are actually admitted into the program and meet with your academic advisor, okay? So starting with MS in professional accounting, this is one of our first programs and this is the only program in um, the Whitman School that allows you to start the program in the spring semester or the fall semester. There are different deadlines, of course, but um, you could potentially begin this program in the spring semester. It accommodates students with or without an undergraduate degree in accounting, which means if you apply with an undergraduate degree in a different field, you will have to complete the prerequisite courses that are required for this degree while you are enrolled in this degree program. So therefore, for you, for those types of students who don't have an undergraduate degree in accounting and who will need to complete the prerequisites, this track will not be available. This track the 16 month track might also be difficult. So you are better off with doing a 21 month track, okay? The students who, who complete this program can actually be prepared towards the CPA exam that you, know, you take for New York State. It's a flexible elective schedule. You are able to integrate different aspects of business into your degree, as in you will have content which will cover generic courses related to general aspects of business, but then you will also have specific um, accounting related coursework as well. And then of course, um, two things. One, this with the Career Center, irrespective of which program you come into, you will be able to work with the advisors in the Career Center based on your particular area of interest and your chosen disciplinary area. And um, they will introduce you to uh, recruiters at various companies that uh, suit your profile, right? So they will encourage you to meet with those recruiters if they are able to connect you directly. If not, they will guide you in the process of how to navigate the whole internship and career placement um, or, or job scenario after graduation, okay? So for the accounting program as well, the STEM designation is uh, coming soon. This is, again, it, when I say coming soon, this is in, things are happening in the background, but we cannot officially state what stage it is at until it is finalized, right? So this is what I can tell you at this time that the accounting program will potentially soon have a decision about its STEM designation. So, Remember how I said business analytics is for 36 credits, so we'll explore that separately. But moving on, we do have the MS on entrepreneurship and emerging enterprises. So for those who want to go to start their own business, this could be a good opportunity for you to engage in this program. The specialty areas in this program as listed here are for those who want to start new ventures or who want to expand on family business who want to go into social entrepreneurship or nonprofits, and those who are interested in potentially handling corporate entrepreneurship. So the you know, CSR responsibility wing of a corporation. So uh, corporate social responsibility. So you could be engaged in that, take courses towards that. So on the right side here, I've given you some available programs to hone your skills. What I mean here is the school has a student incubator center so if you do have an entrepreneurial idea and you want to hone your concept or you have your concepts already and you want to do additional steps, uh, learn additional things, use resources to bring that concept into fruition, you can use the Student Incubator Center. You could also participate in the Blackstone Launchpad Initiative, which is uh, at the university level, so across the campus not just students at Whitman, but also at Whitman and other schools on campus, you could potentially use uh, the Blackstone Launchpad to meet these people, network and get a sense of how your idea could develop. 
the Daniello in, uh, inter internship program is available if you are choosing to complete an internship in the summer with the 16 month option. The Panache business plan competition is open to all uh, interested entrepreneurs. You don't necessarily have to be engaged in this degree program. You could be a Whitman student in a completely different degree program, but actually have a business plan and compete for real money, real seed money. Um, in fact, I think the latest uh, program, the, I'm sorry, the latest competition, they just awarded a total of $42,000 to uh, different teams. So, which is, which is on our website and you could, you could go take a look. Moving to MS and finance, um, there are three specialty areas within the MS degree. So you could specialize within corporate finance or investments or real estate, which means your coursework would be arranged accordingly and your program director will guide you in what classes would be suitable for which specialty area. There are about 11 Bloomberg terminals um, in our uh, Ballantyne Investment Center, which is on the um, first floor of uh, of this uh, building that you see behind me, the Whitman building, you will have access to Bloomberg resources. And one of them I've mentioned here is the BAT or the Bloomberg aptitude test. So you can choose to take the test at your own time. None of this is for credit, but it gives you access to additional learning, which is available to you, but also it uh, opens up opportunities for you that are not necessarily constrained by um, people or centers at the school. So for example, a few years ago, I wanna say in 2015, one of my MBA alums decided, who was specializing in finance, decided to take the Bloomberg aptitude test and was one of uh, the students to score among the top five in the country, ranked top five in the country. So Bloomberg then opened up the network and shared his information with all their contacts and also sent a message to our dean and said, you know, congratulations, one of your students has cracked this. And um, that then opened up opportunities for the student to sort of, you know, network with with the companies that he wasn't initially considering, opened up doors for him to talk to corporate recruiters. And so it, it, it really adds value to your resume and to your marketability when you, when you do additional things that are outside of your coursework. So something to consider. Um, there is additional scholarship for completion of CFA levels while enrolled in the program. So typically there are three levels of CFA. Um, and uh, those who want to go into investment banking, it is absolutely mandatory that you clear these three levels. So if you have not taken level one at the time of admission or application to our program, and by the time you get admitted, you still haven't completed level one, that's fine. You can come into the program and take the test. It's usually offered in June and or December. And so if you've missed out the June uh, option, you can take it in December while you are enrolled in the program. If you clear it on your first attempt and you bring us the certificate in the spring to show that you cleared it, you will get additional scholarship added to your um, initial merit scholarship amount. So I wanted to also take you through, Lavinia, just let me know if you're able to see this. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can see that. So, this, I'm going to actually close out the volume here, is a link to um, a masterclass that was conducted by Professor Tom Barkley, who is the director of the MS in Finance program. So here's a masterclass to Introduction to Financial Derivatives. And I wanted to just show you this link, and it's available in the presentation, which I presume will be shared with you all later, so that you could go and attend a class virtually with uh, Tom Barkley to get a sense of what the teaching is like, what the professor is like, and, you know, get a sense of what we, um, what, what the course itself could be like, the degree, right? So that's just to give you a little taste of Whitman faculty. Moving to MS in marketing, um, 
as the name suggests. So as you can see with each of these degree programs, as I'm sharing these slides, you can see that the content is very specific to that particular disciplinary area. It's not about general management or talking about soft skills or talking about leadership or strategy or operations, right? It's very, very specific to the disciplinary area. So for MSN marketing, it focuses on specific marketing competencies, whether it's with product pricing, distribution and promotion. You do have the emphasis on the digital and the analytical components for both. Um, and, and then the, the way the curriculum is structured is you would have to choose core marketing courses. Then there are selectives and electives. So slight difference between the two. Selectives would be those courses where within a particular category, you might have three course offerings and you will be required to complete two, right? So it's not much of a choice. You have to pick two. Electives are there's a part of classes and take whatever you want. It's not restricted to any category, whatever you want to complete, right? So, so that's the thing, um, slight difference in the selectives and electives. It prepares you to play your leading roles in the field. It's an intimate sized program, affords better uh, student interaction. And again, for each of these degree programs, typically the class size could be restricted around 30 students just to promote better interaction. Uh, maybe 35 students, but it really depends on how well you utilize all the resources that are provided to you in any of these uh, program options, right? And then the last one, of course, is MS and supply chain management. But interestingly enough, supply chain management happens to be the flagship specialization at the Whitman School of Management. It was founded in 1919, but it was first introduced within the MBA as a specialization. The MS degree per se is a more recent innovation and offering. Um, I wanna say only in the last, within the last five years. But we are recognized as one of the nation's uh, premier supply chain management um, program offerings. The curriculum does combine classroom and experiential learning and you not only build content knowledge in uh, the field of supply chain management, but also you have uh, strategic thinking skills and opportunities to explore that in the practical context. Plus, you're also learning analytical skills. Remember, these are all um, uh, STEM designated programs, so they do have quite a bit of quantitative components built into it, uh, into them. And so the business analytics, finance, marketing, and supply chain management are all the STEM designated programs. So this is, a, this is the one where I uh, mentioned earlier that you would have a difference in the curriculum because uh, the MS business analytics curriculum is for 36 credits. So you either start the 16 month track without an internship or you take it with an internship. Um, I do apologize. I think there, there are some typos here. Like for instance, there's no closing bracket. There's no mention of credits here. My, my apologies um, for any typos here. I, I did uh, try to rush and prepare this presentation last evening. So I do apologize in making changes multiple times that I missed out all this, but yeah. So there is no nine month track to complete this thir these 36 credits. It's a 16 month track without an internship, or you could do a 16 month track with an internship. Typically international students prefer to do this track because you want to be able to utilize what you've learned to try and get uh, a position. Um, where you choose to do this internship is not restricted. You can choose to do it in Syracuse. You can choose to do it within the United States. You can choose to do it back home, wherever you are from or anywhere else, right? So we don't restrict you with that, but, but what the important thing is, is that we do recommend that you try and get uh, an internship so that it adds value to demonstrate you have not only the academic understanding or theoretical knowledge, but also the practical know-how to execute um, your content in, in uh, necessary situations or business scenarios that you encounter. Again, you could also do this in the 21 month track without, doing, without completing an internship and extend the timeframe for the program. And this also is, 
at the time of orientation that you would meet with your program director as well as your academic advisor and then make the necessary, uh, choose the necessary option that works best for you. So the business analytics program, the one thing I do want to point out here is there is a difference in this program to other programs in decision or data science. Decision or data science focuses more on the technical aspects and includes computer programming. Business analytics doesn't necessarily require you to only focus on programming. It's more you want to think about it as using analytics tools in order to help make better business decisions. So making decisions based on data and analysis and interpretation of data and how you collect that data using the analytics software, but understanding how to use it in order to derive um, intelligent decision making, right? So you can customize the program with MBA core or elective. So again, within the MBA, all of these specializations are offered. So you could choose to potentially add on maybe a a core MBA general management course to your degree here and not just do only the business analytics courses. Again, your academic advisor will guide you in what classes must be taken, which are core and what are available as electives uh, where you can mess around and take other, uh, other courses. So let's switch gears and move to the MBA experience. So the MBA experience, generally speaking, what is an MBA? Um, so it's a professional graduate degree and ultimate qualification for linking your management experience with your personal development as well, right? Like, so in many times I have heard this said that an MBA is not just a degree program, it's actually a lifestyle change. Right, because you have to learn to think differently and you act differently. So it's not just studying something, but also living that talk and that experience. So you're going to be engaged in cross-functional training and perfecting the soft skills, because here that is important if you're going to become groomed into a leader potentially, or someone who engages in leadership, chooses to do leadership, or goes on to, you know, chooses to do management, like to become a manager, to climb the ladder. So you have to have additional cross-functional training and you will not only learn academic content, specific subject matter, but you will also learn how to be in that particular context, right? So typically for MBA programs, generic information, it could vary the duration of study based on the type of program. Some cases it's a hybrid program, some cases it's a part-time program, otherwise it's a full-time program for two years. Some schools might offer a full-time program for one year. So at the Whitman School of Management, it is a traditional two-year full-time on-campus in-residence program at Syracuse. We don't have any other campuses. So you will come to Syracuse University and you will study in Syracuse, right? It, it has a broader focus that addresses all aspects of management. And within the MBA, you can then choose specializations in any of the areas that we discussed with the MS degrees, right? And of course, you have the opportunity to also complete the internship between years one and two. And Typically, most MBA programs might recommend two years of work experience, but at Whitman, we recommend at least one year. So you want to have at least one year of getting out of your undergraduate degree, going into the real world, gaining some work experience, whatever um, field it might be in. So there's no stipulation that if you want to study an MBA with a specialization in supply chain management, you should have had work experience only in areas related to supply chain management. No, but we do prefer that you have some business related experience that you can then bring back to the classroom, which will then help orient you towards the concepts, the way of thinking in a business environment, and also guide you as you learn to uh, discuss case studies or to navigate various uh, business terms, right? So it'll give you that vocabulary. 
So the MBA program at Syracuse is a two-year program. It requires 54 credits. See, the number of credits is going up here, right, for the MBA as opposed to the MS degrees. So 36 credits are mandatory core classes. There is no way around it. You have to complete them. 18 credits are electives. These 18 credits are where you choose from one of these specialization areas. And these are all the areas in the right side that are listed here that you also looked at as having an MS degree. So if you don't have enough work experience, maybe an MS degree is a better option to gain the depth of knowledge and go get that work experience. But if you do have work experience, then maybe you want to consider doing an MBA with maybe one specialization or two specializations from this list, or take one specialization and up to nine credits from other schools on campus, right? Now, the international opportunities, very briefly, that I will highlight, we do allow students to go through a Singapore internship through our SU abroad office. A faculty member at the Whitman School actually is in charge of the Singapore internship opportunity. Now, of course, all this that I've presented with international opportunities is with prior to the pandemic. And now with the pandemic, it's, of course, a little difficult. But prior to the pandemic, this internship would require the student to apply and be accepted, pay a program fee of probably $550. And then you have the opportunity to actually work with a US company based out of Singapore. And there is also, the fee also covers some cultural um, immersion in business settings in Singapore. And um, I believe also one other uh, city within the precincts of Singapore, right? So you would have had business cultural immersion but you would have also had the opportunity to work with a multinational company based out of Singapore. So just give you a different kind of an experience. The residencies are, are a newer uh, component that have just been introduced, I wanna say last year for a full-time student. It was typically offered in the online program, but the full-time students now have opportunity to engage in a residency, um, to go to a location, whether it's domestic or international residency, whatever is offered at that particular time prior to school starting. Could be a week-long um, endeavor where you travel along with a limited cohort of students and there would also be a faculty member and you travel to a location, but you also get engagement with specific businesses in that location, right? Like, so for example, when they, a uh, group went to uh, Seoul, South Korea, there was a visit to the factory offices of Samsung, where they got a half a day visit at Samsung, and then they were also able to interact with uh, management at Samsung, right? So you're, you are actually able to go and see the location and interact with people who work in that environment on a day-to-day -day basis. And and engage, right? And that adds a different kind of an experiential value to your learning, right? So this in general gives you a little bit about the MBA overview. So let's look at the application checklist very quickly. There's an online application, whether it's MBA or MS degree. The business plan is only part of the MS and entrepreneurship degree, MS and entrepreneurship, not for MBA and entrepreneurship, okay? This is additional component. Otherwise, all other programs, you have an online application, there's a $75 application fee. Because you are attending this event with me, you can reach out to me. I will leave my contact information at the end to request an application fee waiver code. I'm happy to pay this $75 application fee. You don't have to pay it. There is one application essay that you would have to uh, write for the MS degree applicants, you will also have a five minute video component. So you answer three questions in five minutes and record yourself. Two letters of recommendation. This video component is not required for the MBA applicants. The GMAT or GRE exam, it's optional for all MS applicants. For MBA, it will depend on a case by case basis, depending on how much work experience you have, 
right? So I would invite you to schedule a meeting with me to discuss your candidacy. We need unofficial copies of your transcripts, English versions, and all international students will have to provide us an English proficiency exam score from one of these three tests. The home edition of the tests is acceptable. The exception to this uh, test score requirement would be if you have graduated from a US university and lived in, studied or lived in the US for at least three years. So if you don't fulfill that requirement, then know that you would have to send us this uh, proficiency score report. And here are the deadlines for the fall 2022 application, January 15th, March 15th, April 15th. But if you are ready for documents and you want to start thinking about submitting an application within the next you know, few weeks, um, do reach out to me and we can you know, schedule a meeting to go over some any queries you might have and I can give you a code and we can take it from there, right? This of course is an important slide because students always ask, what about merit scholarship? Over 90% of students are usually awarded a scholarship. There is no separate scholarship application. You don't have to request it separately. You don't have to write a separate essay for it, nothing of the sort. It's automatic consideration. When you submit your application, whether it's for an MS program or for the MBA, the admissions committees will review the candidacy for two things. One, to decide your admission into the program. The second, to decide how much merit scholarship you would be awarded. And therefore, this, the GMAT or GRE, while it's not mandatory, if you have a good score, I would recommend that you include the score, okay? So here are some important links for you. It's always https whitman.syr.edu slash ms and whichever specialization you want. Um, and of course, here's the MBA. But I think we are pretty much um, towards the end. And I just wanted to, Lavinia, do we have like another five minutes? Yes, yes. Okay, we'll touch that. upon this. Okay, great. So I, I have two examples here and I just wanted to touch very quickly upon them. Um, they're both MBA students, but I just wanted to share uh, these examples here. And then when you go to the Whitman website, you can look under each program testimonials of current students or recent alumni. And you can also look under the Whitman Voices um, to see about uh, stories about other alums. So Julia here is a domestic student. She's a US uh, citizen, but she is she graduated MBA 2016. So she was one of my students in uh, when I started at Whitman and she started at Whitman at the same time, right? In 2014. Julia came with a background in biology and um, I believe economics because she did like a dual degree in her undergraduate. But she was very interested in finance, but the school that she was attending for her undergraduate degree did not have a program in finance. So she studied econ and she also did biology. And later her track initially when she went into biology was to sort of, you know, go the medical route, if not the medical to go the research route. And then she decided, as she explained one time on a phone call, I was basically sitting on the lab bench and I decided life is passing me by. <laughs> so she didn't want to do that anymore. And she decided that's not for her. So when she came into the MBA, because she did not have an undergraduate degree per se in finance, she had to do a lot of extra reading on her own in order to be able to talk the talk with the finance terms, right? Because it's very specific. But she was very successful and she graduated with her specialization in finance. So remember the 54 credits within the MBA, 36 credits are core credits, 18 credits of specialization for Julia, all 18 credits were in finance, right? That's all she did, one specialization. And she's been employed as a financial an analyst at this uh, nonprofit called Noblis, which is based out of Washington, DC. Um, she was living in Washington, D.C., um, attending office in person, of course, but then now she is based out of 
her hometown in New York City. Um, and, and the company was very willing to, to work with her and change policy to work with her remotely, right? Giorgio is my Sicilian alum, I wanna say, who graduated in 2018. And his is an interesting story, actually. If you go look him up on LinkedIn or you want to reach out to him, uh, feel free to do so. He's very open to sharing his uh, Whitman experiences. But Giorgio came into the program, I believe with a degree in uh, the sciences and actually got very inspired by a course in uh, the program on innovation. And along with his classmate, who was a Vietnamese girl, um, Tui, Giorgio and Tui together came up with this concept of selling an alternate type of milk, an alternative to regular milk. So instead of, you know, plant, like different plant-based milk that you have, like soy milk and oat milk and almond milk, they decided to sell peanut milk, um, which actually became a very successful, not just a project, but even after graduation, it went into, I think for almost two years, they were able to keep it going and sustain it um, trying to work with a, with a facility in New York City that allowed them to bring the peanuts and like roast them and grind them and blend them and bottle them. And there are pictures I have on Instagram of Giorgio riding his little bicycle in New York City uh, with his old fashioned milk delivery, you know. And they used to go to farmer's markets and they used to actually have like a little table booth where Tui and Giorgio would, would uh, talk about this and sell the milk and they had a loyal customer following. So what started as a class project went into a, a successful business idea, right? And they also participated in the business plan, Panashi business plan competition and got some seed money with that. The problem was the shelf life of this peanut milk, they could not extend the shelf life and therefore they could not store it with retailers. And that was something that was causing some problems. And as again, as international students, they you know, had other uh, practical concerns to worry about as well. But anyway, that was a great learning experience. And over time, it sort of uh, fizzled out and then the project ended. But to see what kind of success it had and how uh, an idea from the classroom actually went beyond the classroom, it was, it was uh, phenomenal to see their story. So I thought I would share that here. But I think that's my contact info and ready for questions. Thank you, Sri. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. And of course, thank you for um, you know, telling us about uh, your alumni. I think both cases were very interesting and very inspiring. And here's to hoping for a uh, long shelf life peanut meal because that sounds amazing. <laughs> so I took note of a couple of questions uh, that we sure. got through the chat. So I'm going to go through those first. So um, a participant asked uh, if there are any specific English uh, certifications required to enroll. Right, so we do need the English proficiency score report from the TOEFL, the IELTS, or the Duolingo. So keep in mind that we require the official score reports and um, you will have to have them sent to Syracuse University. And we do accept the home edition of the tests now because in locations where there is still lockdown and you're not able to um, you know, take the test in person, you can take the online test and send that across. Thank you, Shri. So another participant, actually, a couple of them asked if you offer any PhD programs. Yes, we do. We do offer the PhD experience, if you will, but that is offered through the dean's office, not through my office, through the dean's office. So I would encourage you to look at this website, which is whitman.syr.edu, and look under PhD. 
and uh, or the PhD experience, and you can contact um, the person there. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So to go to the next questions, uh, participant asked uh, if the courses under the uh, MBA that you mentioned are under discussion will be approved, and if yes, is there a time on, uh, attached to this? So. So when you're talking about um, MBA discussion, are, are they referring to the STEM designation or are they asking about general specialization? That's a good question. So Emmanuel, if you could specify that in the Q&A box, we will get back to your question later. So in the meantime, um, a participant from Morocco wonders if it's possible for him to join the marketing management program and if yes, what are the admission uh, requirements? So, okay, this is, when you say marketing management, that's a specialization within the MBA. If you are talking about the MS in marketing, then that's a separate degree, right? So keep in mind, it's an MS degree uh, in marketing as well as marketing management within the MBA. Yes, so I am actually gonna drop my calendar information, link to my calendar here in um, the chat box so that if any student who's attended the session today or you know you share this with your interested friends if you want to have a discussion about your candidacy feel free um, flee, no don't flee uh, feel free to <laughs> schedule a meeting with me uh, send me your resume and we can go over specific um, content that will suit your profile, right? So it'll be like a profile evaluation plus discussion about your candidacy and which program is suitable for you. But yes, like I mentioned earlier um, in the uh, application checklist, there is an application checklist. Um, so with an online application, application essay, letters of recommendation, um, your business resume, of course, and then uh, if you have taken the GMAT or GRE, then yes, you can send in the scores. But if you are applying for the MBA, I would very strongly encourage you to meet with me prior to submitting an application because we have to evaluate whether you could be eligible for a GMAT waiver or whether you actually would benefit from submitting a score, right? So I cannot say that in a generic setting. Some cases based on your work experience, you know, for example, we've had students uh, come into the program in fall 21 with like 12 or 14 years in the business environment with steady increasing responsibilities and promotions. What am I going to do asking them for a GMAT score? Right. But somebody who has very limited work experience, you only have you have less than three years or five years. Um, and, and so typically I would say less than five, you would benefit from having a GMAT score because that will be taken into account together with the rest of your candidacy to determine your, not just your admission, but your scholarship, right? So you would benefit from it. So, um, but if it's a bad score, don't submit it because that's the other thing. Can we provide you resources and study materials so you can improve your score? Right. So let's have a conversation. Feel free to schedule a meeting with me. I've dropped my calendar information into the chat box. Thank you very much, Sri. Um, so in the meantime, we got a few more questions. Um, a participant is asking, so you mentioned the internship programs pay. Uh, they are asking how sustainable uh, is the salary in terms of catering to the living expenses uh, in Syracuse? That's an interesting uh, query. Nobody's ever asked me that before. So the internship is dependent on where you choose to apply and get the internship, right? So you want to view it as a, like you would negotiate a job after graduation. You would negotiate an internship as well, the terms of the internship. The career center will assist you in that. The advantages you wanna consider if you get a position at a company in Syracuse is potentially you don't have to go find a new place to live at, right? Because you're already living in Syracuse. So you just 
stay in your own apartment. You don't have to rent it out or you don't have to go find an apartment in another location and pay rent in your current location, right? So there are certain advantages. There are also advantages to the fact that because you've been living for at least a year in Syracuse before you can get the internship, you probably know how to manage your personal expenses, your food expenses and things like that. So there's nothing new for you to learn. But having said that, um, what are some examples I can give you about internship opportunities in Syracuse? I mean, there are people who've, it, it, it really depends on where you choose to seek it because not the it's not something like the same company will take the same students from the program every year from the same program. It's not like that, right? When it's companies like, of course, the big four, we have a relationship with the corporate recruiters. And so they hire students from our undergraduate programs as well as from our graduate programs. But then when you're looking at other companies specific to a location, it's very specific to your, um, your disciplinary specialization. So for instance, if you go to a company like, um, let's, let's just take an example, Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is a finance institution. Does that mean they will only hire students for MS in finance? Not necessarily. They might take somebody with accounting. They might need somebody with business analytics in their analytics department. In, I mean, of course, um, business analytics with a focus in finance, tech, fintech, those kinds of places and positions. Um, would they want somebody in their marketing department? Possibly. So could they hire in that department? Possible. Right. So it really depends on what you are seeking in any internship and where do you see yourself going with that internship? Will it give you enough money to like settle down and retire? No. <laughs> Will it give you enough money to pay your entire tuition? Probably not. But will it allow you at least for three months during the summer to be able to earn some money um, in a full-time capacity? Yes. So you want to understand the concept of the internship and uh, maximize how to use it, right? So. Thank you very much, Reed. That was very thorough. <laughs> so uh, I will go to the next question, which of course is about scholarships and the participant is asking if they are partial or fully funded. Uh, we've had both options. It really depends on the program that you are applying for. And so for, for the MS degree programs, let's be clear, you will not be able to get full funding for the MS degree programs because the program is shorter in duration, right? But for the MBA programs, we have had situations where we have been able to offer full scholarship, depending on candidacy. Thank you very much, Sri. I'm seeing a raised hand and actually the participant has dropped a question in the chat. So they are asking as a law student, they wanted to specialize in business law. So they were wondering if you could give any advice about any available specializations at Whitman's. I don't know if I can because business law, corporate law is actually offered through the law school. It's not offered through B school. <laughs> So what you can do, I mean, if you're all, if you're currently a law student, that limits your opportunities. You either finish law and then apply for an MBA. So you learn, you focus on corporate law um, in, in, or practicing law in business environments, however that's described in your particular institution. Because I know corporate law is a course that um, our law students do uh, at Syracuse. But if you're able to choose your specialization area to go into corporate, practicing corporate law, then I would say you would also benefit from having a degree with an MBA. So then, yeah, okay, he says, I'm done with law, all right. Uh, done with law as in like you're tired of law or you graduated <laughs> with a degree in law. Let's hop into so, a second. 
which, whichever it is. So you can apply for an MBA, yeah, but you would apply as a regular student. Uh, for other students, the reason I'm, I'm highlighting that is because we do have a joint degree program with the College of Law at Syracuse where you can do um, graduated, okay, where you can do a joint degree with the College of Law, JD, and an MBA uh, together and graduate with both degrees. So if you've already graduated with law and you want to specifically uh, practice corporate law, then I would say doing an MBA might be helpful for you. Um, but it also would depend on where you are positioning yourself. So if you have earned your degree, your law degree in a different country, and then you come for an MBA, let's say at Whitman, and you want to practice corporate law in the US, you might find that may not be possible, right? So this will probably be a larger conversation. So I invite you to uh, schedule a meeting or talk with me offline. Yeah, so make good use of the uh, email that we sent you in the chat. So Shree's email and her Calendly link. So you can schedule a meeting, a one-to-one -one meeting. So I will go to the last questions. Uh, a participant is asking if you offer also nursing courses or if the faculty is purely business. Um, at the Whitman School of Management, it is strictly business. Um, I believe Syracuse does not have a school of nursing. So that's something we don't have med school and we don't have health professions. So you want to look at a different university in the upstate area um, that offers you that. But Syracuse University does not have um, medical or health professions. We do have public uh, administration and we have health management policy certificate that's offered through a different school, but not like a school of nursing per se. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Sri. So to go to our final question, somebody asked if there are any international fellowship uh, that they can apply to if they're not ready to do a master's, for example. Wait, say that again, apply to? An international fellowship program. So if you offer any of those. Not through the Whitman School of Management. There might be something which is like short-term programs that are available, but again, be careful how you apply for those because you may not apply directly at the university. You might have to come through a Fulbright or you might have to come through a different foundation to do those short-term programs. And it might be very specific to some departments or some uh, colleges on campus. So at Whitman, typically we don't do that because it's not, um, it's not feasible with just our the way our curriculum is structured. Thank you very much, Free. So to go back to our first question that will now, will now be the last. During the introduction, <laughs> you mentioned that the courses with the asterisk are still under review and there are ongoing okay. discussions around them. Please clarify on that. Thank you. Okay, so they're not under review. So the, the ones with the asterisk are the courses which are STEM designated. So they have already received STEM designation approval. So if you go to the website, the program website, you will see that information already listed. The one that I said is waiting for STEM designation approval is the full-time MBA because it's under consideration and the MS in professional accounting. It does not have its approval as yet, but talks are going on to get them STEM designated. Thank you very much, Sri, for clarifying that. So in the meantime, we got a final question in the chat. Um, Jamie is asking, uh, since he has a public administration degree, if you can perhaps tell him which MBA program can be considered closer <laughs> to his background. So I don't know, again. So you have to understand, degree is different from specialization. Um, so, so what's, what's, what's your degree, Lavinia? I'm an international relations human rights graduate. There you go. So that's an undergraduate or a master's? Master's. Master's. So yours was an MA yeah. in international relations and human rights. So it's a master of arts degree in a particular specialization, which is international relations and human rights. But 
in some convoluted way, you could say the job functionality that she is doing is related in some way to digital marketing. Are you getting a clear example here? This is a live example that I did not plan, but it's happening, right? Because life does not go in the direction that we say it has to go like this. No, it does not go like that. It goes like this, it goes like this, it goes this, whatever. So what you want to do though, is understand what is the degree. The degree is master's in business administration. If you already have a degree in master's in public administration, that's great. Do you also want a master's in business administration? If you do, what specialization do you want? Do you want to do an MBA and go into marketing? Do you want to do an MBA and go into accounting? Do you want to do an MBA and specialize in supply chain management? That I cannot decide for you. Does that make sense? So, so that's why it's hard for me to always answer that question with just like a quick yes or no answer because it's not a yes or no answer. Always remember the degree is something that we can tell you in generic terms what it requires. What you want to do with that degree depends on what you want to do in your career, what is your prior background and skill sets that you bring and where do you want to take it? Right. As an example here, we've seen, you know, Lavinia has a degree in what is not marketing, but there are translatable skills, right, that that transition and that allow her to use in this particular environment, which is client relations, for instance, working in international relations, handling an international population running a webinar for an international audience. There are certain things that you can use, which are skill sets that you can always bring into um, another job functionality or environment into a different field. So what is it like that? What are you passionate about that you want to use your MBA program to help you with? And that's how you want to begin the conversation. So quite a bit of self-introspection. Uh, is required when you are investing in a graduate degree. And if you're also, because keep in mind, you're not just investing money, you're investing time. And always remember that what you learned before is not a waste because you're building on it. It's like we're building a building, right? So we have one foundation. So now we want to build the next one. And then we want to build the next one. And that's how you keep learning throughout life. Thank you very much, Shri. Uh, I love your <laughs> advice. It's always so, so on point. And she's good, guys. I can confirm that she's good at giving advice. So thank you very much for being here with us tonight. And thank you, of course, to all participants who joined in. Uh, I want to remind you that you will get an email with a recording of this webinar. So if you miss any important information, do not worry. We got you covered. You will get it by email. So thank you all again for connecting tonight. You, will, uh, you have a few links and uh, Shri's email in the chat. So make good use of those. And yeah, thank you everyone for connecting. Thank you Shri for taking the time to be here with us and for answering all the questions. Um, and of course, I hope to see you again soon uh, with uh, Syracuse University's Women's School of Management uh, again. And I hope so. I wish everyone a very nice day or evening according to where you are connecting from. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, also to the participants, again, please, I encourage you to complete that survey because I specifically requested a question to be thrown into the survey. So I want answers to my question. I answered your questions. So now you can answer mine, only one question. I just want to know what future topics you might want to see from Syracuse, but again, specific to the business school, right? And feel free to email me. Let me know if you would like to have a meeting. It's not mandatory, but it's, it's available. And so uh, I'm curious if you are from locations where we don't usually travel. So we don't usually travel to, we've not had the opportunity rather to travel to Africa, for instance, to Latin America, to um, very few places in Eastern Europe. We've done quite a bit, a little bit at least of Southeast Asia. Um, and so anywhere else that you are at, you know, please, uh, if we don't have the opportunity to physically meet you in person, we would love to at least encourage and 
connect with you uh, through uh, the virtual environment. So feel free to spread the word. And I look forward to connecting with you all again. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Sri. I pop the link to this survey in the chat and through Excellent. that you can also get your certificate of attendance. So do fill that in. Thank you again for connecting and I hope to see you soon. Stay safe. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.